Hi, both. It's so nice to meet you. I'm so excited to talk about this project. How are you? It's nice to meet you too. I think we're both also extremely excited. <laughs> very excited. Very. It's been a, I feel like time has passed and we still feel like we're in Rome. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So to kick things off, I'd love to kind of start at the beginning and just hear about what drew you to this project or kind of how you heard about it, that whole pre-filming process. Yeah. Do you want to start? Yeah, I guess I can go first. Um, so I kind of heard about the project. Um, I had a casting manager reach out and, you know, um, I had seen Meet Me in Paris and it was amazing. And I love the concept, love the team. Um, and, you know, going and making that decision, it, I felt like for me, it was part of that journey and at the right time and place. So I had said yes. And honestly, I couldn't imagine anything better. Um, Hello Sunshine is an amazing production company to work with. They're very focused on you know, female empowerment. And I just knew I was going to enjoy that time meeting girlfriends, which uh, we made great friends um, and just having such a uplifting experience. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a very quick decision to say yes, after I'd saw, seen the first one. Yes. What about you, Krista? Yeah, it was a similar journey for me. I mean, it started from, you know, I was single and <laughs> I love Italy. I love <laughs> Italy more than maybe anywhere. Um, so <laughs> it was once I met the producers and, you know, got to know a little more about what Roku was doing with this show and like what Druva said, um, how Hello Sunshine is all about supporting women and positive messaging. I knew it wasn't going to be like, you know, anything like salacious or negative or like trying to catch you in like an awkward reality situation. It was just mm -hmm. all about telling a nice story. And um, it was an easy yes for me as well. <laughs> I, think I love also that. Knowing, knowing that like, I think Chris Butler and I both agree when we went through this process, it just, you know, we were constantly told just be yourself, have fun. And everything we did was so just on point in who we are. And I think that just worked out really well. And I think that that's what made the project so exciting because the team just wanted us to have so much fun, be mm -hmm. in our element. And we were just so comfortable. And I, I can't rave about how much of a great experience it was. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Talking about the team obsessed with Hello Sunshine and Reese Witherspoon. Did y'all get to work very closely with her and the Saldanas? Because I know that they were involved as well. So we had Sicily there with us on set. And again, I just cannot reiterate enough how much the producers made every effort, not only to make sure we had a wonderful time, like, like guys, we are making a movie in Rome. Like what a dream come <laughs> true for me. Um, I think for all of us girls and the producers really, they had a tough job to do, you know, they're making a movie in a limited amount of time. They have to tell a coherent story. They're dealing mm -hmm. with real people in real situations, real emotions. Emotions were high at, you know, some, some points people were confused. We didn't know what to do. Um, you know, there's fears that come into play and our producers protected us so well, like from the beginning all the way through the edit. And um, I'm really, really grateful for that. They're extraordinary. I think every day we would just look back and I'm just like, I'm so thankful to like Roku, Hello Sunshine, Cinestar, and everyone that was there, you know, um, we definitely felt safe and just so loved. Um, so yeah, it, it was the best thing, um, you know, and due to timing, obviously certain people are going to be on site and certain people aren't, but Cicely was there and she was amazing. And so was the rest of the team. Yes. I know. I've always wanted to go to Rome and now this is like even more of a reason. We want to go back. <laughs> we might make it happen. Actually, we're excited to potentially go back and revisit it. I want so much pizza there. It was so good. Oh, that sounds so good. Yes. You'll see a lot of food <laughs> in our movie and it's great. <laughs> People talk about Rome, but like they should be talking about it more. Just the sights, like, Truva and I, like, the first time we saw the Coliseum, we were like, 
oh my God, even just seeing these things with your own eyes, like I sobbed when I saw the Pantheon, like you just cannot believe how beautiful it is. Um, mm -hmm. Of course people talk about it, but I think they should be talking about it more. My God. Heavy, you, know, you know, just being able to walk around or drive and just see these monuments, it just, it was wild. Um, mm. But it's a oh, stunning, stunning architect. Yes. So from like a story perspective, this concept is so unique and I'm literally obsessed with it. I'd love to hear about how you handled kind of in the moment, the spontaneity versus the script of it all, if you will, because those two things feel kind of almost opposed to one another. So I'd love to just hear about that from an inter internal perspective. Yeah. Um, for myself, honestly, I went into this process really being open. Um, and as you see my story unfold, you see why I'm there and, you know, just letting go a lot of the pressures and really being in my element. So I think what I, even if this is new to me being in that site, um, I think again, going back to the team, they made it so comfortable that we really just presented ourselves to be present and just have fun in the moment. And so when, you know, we were put in these situations and dates, we really just went with it. You know, there was just random banter and just having fun, even if they were strangers. And then from there, obviously there's a process to creating a story. So through our interactions, um, they were just able to grab a lot of content. And to be honest, when we look back, we're just like, this is just naturally us. Um, and since that environment was so safe, we were, you know, really open to going on these dates and just having fun and being ourselves. Um, the script kind of wrote itself, to be honest. Yes. Yeah. I love that. Something did it. That... Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Yes. Keep going. <laughs> Something that I found really interesting about that format. I love that you asked that question. Um, is that whether it was intentional on the producer's part or not, what kind of happened was we had like kind of a princess situation where the three of us girls were locked in this villa. We were not allowed to go anywhere or like see anyone um, outside of what the producers allowed us to do, mm -hmm. which what that created in the boys was this really like, making a strong effort to see us, to impress us when they did see us. Um, and it really spoke to me in terms of like, you know, just the way that sometimes like making access to you a little bit more limited can inspire mm. effort in, you know, in the man, in a hetero relationship. Um, so it was like by the nature of how the production worked, it really like made the men try really hard when they did yeah. get to see us because they really were only able to see us when the cameras were rolling, you know? So yeah, um, I, I agree with cool. you, Isabel. I didn't, I mean, if you think about it, it's so true. We were really protected and our villa was amazing. So I'm not complaining there, but you know, you have 10 days, about 10 days to go on dates and they have such a mm. limited time. They don't know, we don't know when we're going to meet these men. And I think it's just grabbing that opportunity when you do have it is just so rare because nowadays people bail, they push off dates or, you know, there's just so many options. And I think your brain is just wired to go in different directions. But being in this element, I think it brought me back to back in the day before social media existed and dating apps yeah. really made an effort. You locked in a time, you showed up you had fun and you put your best foot forward. Um, and I think that's why where the romantic side came in and we were so bubbly and fun and happy and, and, it, and it was in Rome. So it was, you know, just all adding up. But I do agree, Christabel, that did make them really, um, you know, just impressive. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like that makes the film almost more relevant because that is the number one thing that my friends and I all talk about is like on these dating apps, people putting in the effort or not putting in the effort. And I'm like, I'm sick of it. <laughs> I'm such a, I just hate dating apps. I've downloaded them a thousand times and then I just delete them like a week later. Like I'm the worst with that. And I think we were all kind of like in that place in our life where like, we just need something different because what's, 
currently our standard isn't working. <laughs> mm, not working. It's not working. And honestly, not only did the men, but I think we all came in just putting our best foot forward. Like I have never been in this element and I hadn't dated in seven years. I hadn't had a boyfriend and I kind of was limiting myself and to see myself thrive in a place where I had such a limited amount of time just proved to me how much, you know, when you are on a date or, you know, kind of interested in somebody to take that moment and grab it. Hmm. So Meet Me in Rome is described, of course, as a reality rom-com. So I have to ask what y'all's favorite rom-coms are. If you can name them. <laughs> I know that's a hard question. Pretty Woman, for sure. Excellent. I can. I'm not going to say 13 going on 30. <laughs> um, I think uh, my favorite is he's just not that into you. Mm. And I think it's because there's so many moments in that movie where I just like laughed because I was like, my old self would totally agree. <laughs> like, it, like some of these things are so obvious to us of like, you know, what we're doing or what we're not looking for that's wrong. And then we fall into this love story and, you know, it's just right in front of your face. And it was just funny to see, you know, each of those stories grow um, in that movie. But I thought that was one of my favorites. Yeah. But there's so many. I like PS I love you. There's just so many I liked. <laughs> yes. I also love Notting Hill. Oh, Notting Hill is good. Yes. And, I was just um, talking to my roommates about I'll that. I'll say that one one more time. How to lose a guy in 10 days. Oh, yes. <laughs> so good. And of course. Christabel, I cannot pass up a conversation without asking you at least one 13 going on 30 question, if that's okay. Um, especially since the 20th anniversary is this year, which is so exciting. I'd love to know if you have thought about where Jenna might be in 2024. You know, I think there's something so poetic about 13 going on 30 and the timing of where we are as a society now, because if you think about it, what Jenna loved more than anything when she was a kid, when, you know, myself and all my peers were that age too, was magazines, you know, she wanted to be in media mm -hmm. she wanted to be an editor. And now everyone wants to be an influencer. Everyone wants to be a content creator, a YouTuber, TikTok or whatever, um, which is, kind of like the new magazine it's the new publication it's yeah media. so what Jenna was wishing for her life what she was imagining for her future kind of like we all kind of ended up there together like anyone who publishes now you're kind of the editor of your own life so it's it's really kind of poetic how the timing of that worked out Yes. Oh my gosh. I love that answer. That was beautiful. Um, and like it's, it it's looks you, like you, Chloe, yeah. that's you. I know. That's, that's, that's Druva more and more, you know, all the time where we're building up her TikTok. Everyone go follow Druva's TikTok. Um, and absolutely. Chrisabelle is my cheerleader. I love her. <laughs> oh, that's my dog. That's Saffron. <laughs> Hi, Saffron. Oh my gosh. Wait, no. oh. <laughs> She's in my just can't avoid these things but that's, that's my amazing. little baby she improves all my men and my love interests <laughs> as she should um so it looks like this might actually be my last question for today um but Drew, I love what you say in the trailer where so everyone watching this will have heard the idea of choosing love on your own terms and I'd love to hear how this whole process kind of allowed you to put that into practice in a new way both of you yeah um that's such a deep question um as you see parts of it in the in the trailers and you'll see tomorrow um I haven't been in a relationship in seven years and one of the things is my sister my younger sister um who's four years younger got married right before I flew to Rome like I went to her wedding mm -hmm. my big wedding and I flew to Rome and, you know, there, for me, there just have been so many societal pressures in the Indian community. And I think that falls onto my parents and the culture they came from of, you know, marrying young. And when you're a girl, that's like what you do, you get married. And I felt like throughout my dating life, slowly it became 
dating for other people, you know? I, so I think I resented the idea of dating, to be honest, if I look back. Mm. And so when I went to Rome and leaving my sister's wedding as beautiful as it was, and there was so much love and I was so happy for her, I felt like a moment where I let everything go. And I was like, you know what? This is a place where I don't know anybody and it's time for me to shine and just let let that pressure go and just have fun. Yeah. Um, so I think that's where, you know, it was it was less about other people because I think in society these days, and I love Valentine's Day, but I I also am just like a little bit like, you know, you should you should find love all the time and in so many different things, whether it's in yourself, in a relationship, in your family, and everything, right? Appreciate it all. And I think sometimes we bubble into like, oh my God, the perfect relationship or being in a relationship or being engaged or married. And you see these milestones your friends and families have, and it kind of creates a pressure on you. Society just naturally does it. And I think it loses that passion of you doing it on your own and your own terms if you're there at the right time in your journey. And I think that's when I was like, it, it is my time and I'm ready for it. And I'm ready to let go of, you know, having it be on someone else's terms. And if it happens now, it happens now. If it happens later, it'll happen later, but enjoy the moment, you know? Um, that's probably one of the hardest things to do and say, but I, I don't know why. I just thrived in Rome doing it. <laughs> so yeah, long answer, sorry. <laughs> no, oh my gosh, I love that. What about you, Christabel? Did it change your perception about, kind of love in that way at all? I think for me, from the very beginning, you know, this is obviously a totally different experience of dating and, and looking for love. You know, it's not something you're really going to experience anywhere else. So I liked that it was like switching up. It was just switching it up for me. You know, it's not going out with friends and hoping you meet someone. It's not being on the dating apps. It was just something completely different. And whether or not we, you know, found the love of our lives on this set, I think it still felt like a win. And if you believe in manifestation or the law of attraction or things like that, I think it's helpful to even just like create that feeling of love and mm -hmm. connection, um, you know, and, and remind yourself that there is hope. <laughs> that, yeah. Love does exist. Like for me, um, it, it was just helpful to feel that again. Um, and I think it is going to help me move towards the partnership that I'm looking mm. for long-term because um, it, it felt like a small win, you know, and it feels mm. easier to get a bigger win once you get one small win. So. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me. Obviously, huge 13 going on 30 and cake tv fan and i'm so excited for everyone to see both of your journeys when meet me in rome drops thank Chloe, you thank We're you so to much you. thanks to Brit and Kyle. the the coverage has been really beautiful and we're really grateful yes nice. yes i can't wait for everyone to watch it <laughs> Excited. Well, meet me in rome. there's yes. a lot to see there's a lot to see <laughs> there's a lot to see <laughs> a lot to see <laughs> Well, we're excited for everyone, but yes, and have fun seeing each other at the airport. I think you said, Druva. I gotta head to the airport and go see Isabel. <laughs> Fun. Awesome. Dude. Thank well, you. Well, have a good rest of your day and a good rest of your weekend too. Yes, you too. Let us know how, what you think about the movie. <laughs> I definitely will. Bye, Chloe. <laughs> Bye. Ciao, babe.